Greetings mortals, I am Nathan, Wanderers of the Underworld, or specifically the ruler of Manga Hell. And today we will be reacting to the newest chapter of One Piece, chapter 1408, titled 20 Years. So that means Kyle and Luffy are gonna be fighting for 20 years now, because, it, because you know how long some of the final battles are taking place. Having this battle is at this point probably taking place for a lot longer than it should, realistically speaking. And God only knows how long it's gonna be in the anime. But, oh well, I guess we're gonna have to wait 20 chapters or however long the 20 year thing is gonna take for this battle to end. So, let's get into this chapter. So, anyways, the first, we first start with a color page, well, the cover page with uh, German says it's called by the voyage. Which I think it's actually been a long time uh, since we've got an update. I, I may not be exactly right on this, but I'm pretty sure that it was the the entirety of April didn't have any updates for this uh, Gemma mob up of this Gemma adventure of Oda break as well as the Golden Week, which I think at this point everything should go back to normal for at least until August in terms of chapter releases. So at least that's a good thing. But yeah, I don't think we've actually gotten any updates since- Oh, I also think the last two pages had, like, color pages. But I could just be wrong about it, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. But anyways, we get the update as we see a Brule, uh, telling Cracker, who's finally recovered to a, to a degree. I mean, he's still a bit bandaged up, but he's actually back now. Telling Cracker about Ichiji and Renju being back in Whole Cake Island. As he uh, takes a note of that, and one of these cockpits don't have any dialogue, Wait, they do have little, like, uh, thought balloons or something like that, because Cracker actually has, like, a Cracker... Ooh, I know what I to do here. Maybe he's got, like, you now got to go and deal, capture these... I mean, to, to kind of redeem himself for the whole uh, Luffy situation, but I'm not exactly sure. Now, as for the battle between Cracker and Ichijin Reiju, now, I could technically still see the Radio in each GP cracker because, you know, he's beaten a lot. And depending on how he goes there, like in the biscuit armor and how not, and depending on how you scale the wind smokes to the gear fourth, I could see them beating him, but I could also see it be like one of those things where you just avoid because I don't know how much of a focus about between cracker and Radio in each a proper 1v1 would actually work. So, I do have to wonder that fund. But, yeah, anyways, I'm assuming this means Cracker is gonna make a biscuit armor for him and go there, as well as they, as Rage Ichiji somehow capture Brule, because that's apparently a thing that happens with her a lot. And, yeah, we're gonna see how things are on that front. Maybe someone else is gonna join him or something, I'm not exactly sure. And, anyways, then next we cut to the proper sto story as we have the giant fist that Luffy made in the last chapter up going down as Momonosuke is screaming up at the side when they're saying Momos answer. Move Onigashima out the way! Luffy, wait, that can't be done! As then we have Momonosuke saying, it's not. As then we have uh, uh, Momonosuke thinking to himself, I know you will find. Well, actually, I think he just remember the words of. I think his mother is. It's just like, I know you will find a way to revive the Kazuki clan in the future. As we get like a very happy family picture of Toki Hiyori. which remember Hiyo Mosuke hasn't seen his sister yet, so to him she still looks like a girl here. And Odin, as then we see Mosuke spine with just hitting the uh, Onigashima and trying to push it just with his sheer strength. To the best of his abilities. So yeah, no more fire clouds. So anyways, there we have Lu uh, Shao Luffy sending the, uh, the fist down. As Kaido looks at that. As Kaido's like, Very well, I'll take this one hat on. Have you heard Straw Hat? <laughs> so yeah, I guess Kaido's not dodging this because it seems like a very slow attack. As in, uh, we get like a, a, the explanation point from Luffy. As Kyle starts to send some fire from his mouth that's kind of engulfing him. As Kyle says, this country's hero burned to death 20 years ago. Well, technically he got shot to death, but to be fair, I'm pretty sure the fight would have taken him out anyways. As the Kyle's like, flaming drum dragon, this has been a lawless land since then. 
They've wanted all this time for you, you saviors to show up. Oh so yeah, now Kaido is a flipping flaming dragon. As in, the fire that's covering Kaido right now is actually so hot that Lu it burns Luffy's hand. It's like hot. As then we have uh, Luffy saying, "Don't worry, it's okay to let go." Uh, oh, actually, no, Kaido said one saying this. Don't worry, it's okay to let go. I assure you, I won't run. After all, your right hand won't don't come chase crashing down. Crashing down. After, so, yeah, as we see that, as then we see a bit of a demonstration of how hot Kylo's body is right now, as we see that one of the, I guess, one of the horns on the mountain getting melted just by. Kaido like touching, not even directly hitting it, just like the feel, same, just feeling it. Another demonstration of how how hot Kaido is right now. As Kaido's like, because I'm going to vaporize, vaporize it. So yeah, Kaido's gonna stay there and take the hit. So this does actually raise the question in the actual final battle if Kaido decided to dodge the attack instead of taking a hat on when he went to this form, if he would win. I do wonder that, but... You know, honestly, I feel like that would probably just ruin the kind of final moment, because the only reason why Kaido lost is because instead of running away and attacking Luffy, he decided to take a hat on to prove why he's more powerful. But, we'll see on that front. So anyways, they have Luffy be like, Like, I'll let that happen. Gum gum, no! As then we get, I guess the name of this power, this uh, form is, uh, another name for this form is like Raising Dragon. Then we get a little bit of a flashback with Luffy and Hyo, as Hyo is explaining to Luffy, what you call hockey is known as Rio here in Wano. And then we got back to the shot of them clashing. As then Luffy he says, Grimes taught me how to attack without making contact. I'm going to knock you to the bottom of hell. Actually, Kaido right now looks like one of the pets we have in house, so I'm not exactly sure that would. So I think you just return him to his rightful place. In all honesty, Luffy, if you do knock him to hell. But yes, anyways, then we have Luffy using Baijuan Go. As Kaido uses Blazing Bagara. I guess Blazing Bagara doesn't need the uh, actual combo. But anyways, they go for this clash, and we just have it, like this kind of Dragon Ball Z clash here. As we cut away from this epic clash to see what uh, others are doing. So in this chapter we have, uh, well right now we have Usopp reacting to Kiku and uh, Kinema being on the ground covered with water. Usopp's like, oh no King, Kiku, don't, I didn't mean to drop you. As we see them on the ground and, and I think, is it Hamlet? I think it's Hamlet. Yeah, uh, just kind of his draft room, just kind of, uh, kind of like drawing himself out, kind of like, oh, I guess that's because the water came crashing down because of that producer. As he was like, please be alive, don't go dying on me now. As we see a uh, Kinem on the floor with his eyes closed. Then we cut to the main performance floor. As we see the samurai, I'd be like, Sir Straw Hat, we are counting on you. Take Kaido down, finish him for good. So yeah, not sure how bland the attack is going to finish Kaido for good, especially how, uh, how thick he is, but I guess he is. Anyways, there we see uh, Ki Ka Kaomatsu be like, pan pan, this nightmare won't end unless Kaido is driven out of from this land. So yeah, I guess Kaido's like, uh, kind of just like, yeah, this will not end until he's driven out. Which also, I feel like this point he might just leave because his empire is in ruins, if we've been totally honest with ourselves, but I guess not. So anyways, then we get the, the flashback that's coming back to, I think, 20 years. Huh, so I guess this doesn't mean this battle is going to take 20 more years. It's just going to be, we're coming back to the past. So yeah, anyways, then we get some of the people screaming, Odin Summer, his returns are getting away, don't let a single one escape. Is there we see uh, the red scabbers running? Is there still a handcuff here? Which is fine because I'm pretty sure uh, Kinema are merely broke them once they fall on the ground. Well, he is one of these. But regardless, they're all running. As I'm going to see Kinema is the one screaming here, like, run! Odin Sama, don't look back! 
Odin Sama. I'm gonna say that Odin Sama some of the some of his uh, the people who are looking at it. As then we get uh, a shot of, uh, of them running as they hear the bang from Kaido. As then we see, uh, I'm guessing Kiku crying here. As we see, Kaido is gone. As then we have Orochi saying, "There is only one place those semi would go, Kuri." As then Kaido thinks to himself, as Kaido I think says here, they tend to safeguard Odin's hair, Momonosuke. Actually, now by judging by the Kaido's reaction here, it was someone else, maybe Orochi or something. Mon as Kaido says, he's so he has a son. I'll deal with him myself. As then we have some of the civilians over there being like, Please have mercy, stop hunting the Kazuki clan! <laughs> so yeah, kind of funny how this whole thing kind of started with the, the, the people of Wano hunting with the, the Kozumi clan, and now they are the ones pre begging for them, for God to stop hunting the Kazuki. Oh, I guess at that point, I really do wonder if at that point some one of these people were like, Shit, all of this just because we couldn't stop punishing the Kurozumi clan. Fuck us. <laughs> Anyways, we don't see Kyle listening to him as he just grabs his cannibal, just hits everyone to send them away. As then we have Orochi be like, Don't hesitate to sh shoot any vermin that dares to defy their shogun. Then we get like a bunch of beast pirates just shooting at the samurai as the samurai are like, ah, oh, yeah! As then uh, we have some reports from the beast pirates be like, uh, being like, well, first I'm guessing it's Orochi or Kyle be like, what's, what are of Odin's wife? As a beast pirate, like, she was confirmed that in Buckworth though. No one else was seen fleeing the ruins of the Odin castle. Uh, as then we have someone saying, the Kazuki line is officially dead. As then we have Orochi saying, now the time has come for you, you Daimu to choose. Will you help us uh, ush up in a new Wano, or will you try to wage war? As we see Kyle just standing there being like, oh, messing here. Yeah. As then we get like a sword being open, as one of the diamonds was like, a stupid question with a Obvious answer as we see all the daimo. We see a guy who kind of looks like Eevee be like who is we find he's from Uda. We get uh, that uh, Ringo daimo. We get uh, Yamasu from Akumai. As we get that other fat guy from Kibi. As we see all all of them getting ready and all scrolling like in to fight. As there we have uh, either the samurai or the retain or the the rulers of these those lands be like, uh, the daimyo, be like, we refuse to recognize a shogun that isn't a Kazuki. It is our duty to avenge Odin. Wait, won't you guys? Isn't this whole mess because you guys put the possibility of someone else becoming the daimyo was on the table? Well, I mean, I mean, I'll before Sakuyaki when with Sakuyaki's parents. Was that a situation here? I guess they will find the Kazuki Jones which shows the next person. Maybe that person will have become a Kazuki. I don't know. So as then we have Kyle using his ball breath, destroying the sam killing a few samurai and everyone. As then we see uh, I'm guessing the Rochi from his mansion or somewhere fanning and like Koo foo 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 ha 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 we things it would be an insult to call any of you samurai you're not a samurai either, Orochi. I don't know why you are the one with your high nose up, up in the air. How you're even weaker than everyone else. So we then see a bunch of people being burned. As then we see some of the samurai be like, Damn it, if only that fool didn't have Kaido backing him. As we have someone be like, Quiet, Orochi is everywhere. Kaido's forces will find us. Uh, I don't know if that's really necessary here, dude, because you two look like you two will fight against them, and I'm pretty sure you guys are all just gonna be killed right now. Unless you do just random civilians, but I'm pretty sure you two are someone who will fight against them. But yeah. And anyway, then we have someone screaming like, track down every- Well, I guess the beast part screaming, track down every able-bodied young man you can, and bring them here. Then we see a bunch of the semi working in their minds. It's like, ah, oh, is a die- uh, you know, 
is in someone saying this entire country will become our we weapons factory. As I'm screaming, wow, I guess the beast pirates here. As we, we get uh, a, a wife or a child be like, please wait, please don't take him. And I was like, daddy, as we get the beast pirate, who do you think you're mouthing off to? As then we get a shot of the river being all black. And someone's like, why has the river gone dark? As then we see a sad woman, like, there's no more drinking water. Then we see uh, someone, uh, I'm missing someone who's trying to farm or maybe collecting the food or something. Uh, uh, but a lot of things, it seems to be another woman. Be like, the crops won't go. As the baby's like, wah. As, as the woman's like, and there's nothing left to bait. As we are going, wah. As we were to see like a skull there. I guess that's just a skull from the battles, but you get the idea of the skull. So yeah, anyways, there we see the beast part. Like, if you can still breathe, you can still work. Keep your hands moving, you scum. As we see the, the one or someone actually you know, carrying everything, doing their work. As there we have uh, the beast. Part, like, Don't call a miracle is coming to save you. As we see like one guy passing down. As then the beast part, like, the borders are staying closed. As then we see... Uh, so the weapons factory, as we also see a news there. I'm guessing the news might just... The news implication is that body was hanged there. And the question now is which body was hanged there? Did someone hang themselves because of the spear? Or did someone just hang themselves, you know, just for the sake of... You know, just for the... You know, no, because of punishments. I'm guessing it was the latter, because I think in the beginning of this arc, uh, they actually did have, like, a woman... With a knife, with a noose ready, the in the one of the panels that was censored in the anime. So I'm guessing it was someone just hung themselves. So yeah. Anyways, then we get. I'm assuming to, uh, Orochi is speaking like, "We have to be patient. It will be long win a long winter, but we have to believe." It. Uh, actually, no. That's probably just the summer. I'll be like, "We have to be patient. It will be a long winter. We, we but we have to believe in Toki Summer's words." As then we see uh, some sun working, we see Orochi laughing, it's like, look at all the, these glutinous fools, Kaido, they actually ate the leftovers of the defective smaller foods, goo ha ha ha! As we see the soldier, the, some of the people, civilians, people from every of those towns eating, laughing. I mean, to be fair, Orochi, would they even be aware of the weak, all those proper properties of the smaller foods? Anyways, then we see uh, Orochi dancing as we see some of the geishas around him. And Orochi's like, that's it. Let's have the rest of every suit town follow suit. Their bellies will stay empty and their loved ones will continue to keel over. But they won't be able to do anything except can grin brightly. They will never stop laughing. And we see like a child being next to like, I don't assume how grateful his father is. And it's like, ah ha ha ha. As the Orochi's oh, like, the perf it's the perfect fate for this country's past. Goof! Ha, ha, ha. As then we cut to present with Orochi uh, in his uh, Orochi form as he's on fire. And Orochi's like, oh, he, he, curse you, Komurasaki! Goof! Ha, ha, ha. I'm taking you with me. You shouldn't have underestimated the wrath of the Kozumi clan. Ah, God, I was taking it seriously. Like, all right, to be fair, the fire does make Orochi's form look a little more intimidating, like a mini Kaido, but still, it's like very goofy. Yeah, it's a very goofy face here. And then we have uh, Orochi be like, I'll be seeing you in hell. That's not how hell works, Orochi. You don't get go into hell just because you get killed by by someone who's going to hell at the same time. All you do is killing send them to heaven, unfortunately. I mean you don't ask anyone just ask anyone who lives here here about it. Every it's pretty common knowledge, honestly. Uh, he will not about when he comes here. So anyways, then we have yeah, or just saying, you can drink to get. We can drink together down there. Whoa! Actually, first of all, Komisaki is not even gonna count there. And second, Orochi, you are not gonna be one of my uh, upper echelons there. You're just gonna be one of those annoying scum 
we have our own just so we can uh, have we can fill the lowest levels Be well the highest levels here technically because we can have every because otherwise the most prophetic villains will just be filled the least integral important villains at the least imagined will just be filled by henchmen anyways then we have uh, someone saying seems things are getting out of hand as we get a sword being achieved as then Orochi notices it as then we see Orochi's head being cut off once again and this time by Dan Jiro as Orochi's head falls down as we see, uh, we got to the flower capitals, we see the people lanting, leaving their lanterns. As we see someone rolling on the lantern, please make Orochi disappear. As a, as Danjiro were probably even needing to be told that, did their job. Now, is Orochi actually dead here? I don't know, it's likely, I mean, he does have less hats right now, so it's very likely that he's dead, but it's still kind of difficult to tell, especially with his death fruit. Like, I don't think we ever got, like, an actual explanation on how his death fruit works, exactly. I mean, it was just, like, something we can get, like, he can live as long as he has a few hearts. Well, a few hats, but we don't know that font. But yeah, anyways... Then Jiro just cuts it and doesn't say a word, as then we just see Roach's head falling down, uh, hopefully for the last time. As then we see just uh, uh, Then Jiro holding Hiyori as he, he is comforting her. As then we see uh, the people sending their lanterns, as we see a few more, one saying, Free us from this hell! Give, give me... A a give me a if of clear water. I'm actually just supposed to give me some clear, give us clear water or something like that. It's just translations, you know. As there we see uh, the we got back to the clash as we see the giant line there as they're as Kaido and Luffy are both screaming as it's heading there and there's just like the per. The present was the cries of the past. The cries of the past. So yeah, and that's the end of the chapter. So I guess Orochi is now finally done with. And yeah. So this chapter... While I'm not a fan of how we're like, just dragging this fight out with Kaido and Luffy a bit more since, you know, we like, have like... We essentially end this fight in the same manner as we started this, with maybe like the two coming out a little bit closer and a little bit more of a hockey outlanding, uh, a bit more of hockey being released. But I still, not gonna lie, find it kind of no, we terrible that we just don't leave much with it. But as things that actually happens, the things that actually happen are good things. It's not like something like Black Clover where we just barely get any kind of updates. We're just gonna get like confirming the same things we have already known, everything that we're already established. But here we got a little bit more, and there are actually things happening. Like we have one of the small bosses, aka Orochi, who is the most insignificant boss, being possibly killed for the final no, moment. Now, the thing I do find interesting here is that the this this lantern that we see says. Free us from this hell. Now, the thing that's important is the first letter says, Please make Orochi disappear. Now, make Orochi disappear obviously means death, makes it so it doesn't, you know, get involved anymore. Yeah, but free us from this hell just means have it so the thing, holds, thing stops. Mean that even if Luffy, let's say, beats loses to Kyro right here, if Kyro just decides to quit Wano because he literally has nothing more left in the Wano, like his army is destroyed, everything's left, nothing's left, he just decides to, I don't know, grab his top officers and just bunk, just go somewhere else, that would actually also be free that Wano from this hell. So I do want to, that's gonna be where we are going here, but we have to wait and see. Especially since let's be real here, Kyle being defeated because he just wanted to take Luffy's attack hell would be kind of, you know, shitty. But yeah. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys like this reaction. I hope you guys leave a like to this chat, like, like this video.
there you go. I also hope you guys share your thoughts and opinions on this chapter in the comments below. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of your mortals next time. Goodbye.